In the name of the Council of the University of Technology, Sydney, I declare this 96th Congregation of the University of Duty Assembled. Every graduation is special for each of those who are graduating. And in each ceremony, there is usually some other event which makes it special. But today, the first graduates in the Graduate Diploma in Sports Management will graduate. In this ceremony, about 250 graduates from the Faculty of Business will be admitted to the degrees and awarded the diplomas to which they have qualified. This is one of 16 ceremonies held this autumn to approximately 4,400 graduates. Ten are being held in this great hall of the city campus, and six were held at the Karinga campus two weeks ago. There will be further ceremonies later in the year in the spring. May I welcome you all to this congregation.
Shauna Marie Collier. Lucy D'Ambrosio. David Alan McCullough Reed. Anthony Andrew Grazina. Patricia Yolanda Guzman. Richard Holman. One point. Simon Jonathan Knight. Gerhard William Kuras. <laughs> Meng Ho Kwong. <laughs> Sir Nazar Balbomer. Chuck Lee. <laughs> Terence Kwok Chung Lee. <laughs> Mark David Mallard. Stuart Murdoch Madison. <laughs> Ian John Michael Newhouse. Dominique Francis O'Brien. Kim Parson. <laughs> Gregory Allen Hollybank. <laughs> R. 
Renoir Land Prasad. Sayed Hakimur Rama. Mark Andrew Richards. Hussain <coughs> Rifai. Michael Settington. Tibrut Sangroon Grove. James Sordana Sapio. Chi Wee Tao. Zai Shen Xiao. Christopher Keith Chi. Judita Maria Smerdley. <laughs> Regina Valerie Smith. <laughs> Jane Margaret Stewart. Millie May Lay Town. <laughs> Nicholas Basilis Flaveris. Sunisa Tiazako. <laughs> Shane Lineford Tiernan. Harry C. Paul Andrew Borbach. You Wang. Ian Keith White.
Rudy Dharma Vijaya. Benny Ujaya. Chancellor, I present to you a graduate in the Master of Business in Accounting, Benedict John Standen Jones. It is always interesting on these occasions to find out how widespread uh, the web of places from which our graduates come. Today there are at least four graduates who came down to this occasion uh, from Indonesia, from Jakarta, and one from Bangkok. And I think it's one that will they come distances of that kind to these ceremonies. A university is a community of scholars, of students, of teaching staff and support staff, and the day-to-day -day activities which go on lead up to the, okay, this special occasion of graduation. And I want to say on behalf of the council of the university and on behalf of the staff, and by that of course I mean both the teaching staff and the support staff, that we welcome you most warmly as graduates and diplomates at the university. I also want to give a very special welcome to families and friends who are here to support you and to share this occasion with you. May I extend also a special welcome to Rowena Sobeska, who is a graduate of one of the predecessors of the University, the New South Wales Institute of Technology, uh, whom we are honoured to have as our occasional speaker, and she will shortly be introduced by the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Tony Blake. May I also welcome June McLaughlin from TAFE who is a former senior executive of New South Wales Institute of Technology. Then I must congratulate you all on the achievement of the successful completion of your courses. And those congratulations, and indeed the uh, thanks as well, uh, go to your families and friends for the support they have given you while you've been working on your courses. And only you, both graduates and also the families and friends, will know how much that support has, been, has meant of the sacrifices that have to be made and the adjustments to normal lives which are necessary when people are working on courses of this kind. And that of course has meant even more for those who have to be doing their courses part time. Well, the great majority of you of course are graduates and, and have already done earlier courses. Nevertheless, it's I think worth stressing that you have now an increased responsibility in your work tasks to make wise decisions in these times of great change, when many of the institutions and standards of society are questioned and beliefs held dear are often of its own. And you have a considerable obligation then to study and examine these changes and to ensure that only those which are desirable and valuable are unaccepted because very often people endeavour to put up changes simply for changes' sake without necessarily ensuring whether they will be advantageous. We're all, we are all aware that structural and technological change allied to economic policies of recent years, which have come under the umbrella term of economic rationalism, have created a gap between those who have and those who have not in our community. Some time ago, Professor John Neville of the University of New South Wales described economic rationalism as a school of thought which holds that with very few exceptions, the market is the best way of deciding what is to be produced and how it is to be produced. And he went on to question that concept. And of course, I'm not an expert in the field, as you all now are, but while acknowledging the importance of market forces, I believe that we can go too far in allowing the market to dictate that our values in our community which do not necessarily respond to the relatively simple imperative of the market and its use of competition to arrive at the lowest bid. 
for the world's price. Some of these factors are equality, social equity, social cohesion, values concerned with the arts, personal fulfillment, and the very fact of having employment sometimes. There is a balance to be struck then in any civilized, humane, and compassionate community between social cohesion on the one hand and individual initiative on the other. Individual initiative brings about many of the great advances which take place, and also, it must be said, many of the great disasters. Social cohesion, which can take many forms, including the kind of multiculturalism we are so successfully developing, can take place as we judge the measures which are necessary for the benefit of the whole community to guide and information. In the work you will do, you will be able to consider and contribute to the balance which is necessary. So that in coming to grips with the problems you'll be faced with, you'll need to apply the abilities your courses have encouraged, in particular the capacity for critical inquiry, the exercise of the freedom to criticize, the encouragement of creativity and innovation, which of course is terribly important in our present day society, perhaps even more important than it ever has been in the past, and the encouragement of diversity rather than simply conforming, and all of those characteristic allied, of course, to the particular knowledge and skills you've acquired in your discipline. And the love of scholarship, which has brought you through not only your first courses, but the great majority of you through postgraduate courses, you will take with you always. Indeed, I think we are increasingly aware now that learning is not something that stops when you finish a course, it goes on through the whole of life. And it's important to come back to the university from time to time to extend your involvement in education. Some of the people I spoke to today, having already done postgraduate work, are talking about coming back to do further postgraduate work. I commend that. Your knowledge and skills, as you are well aware, do not just contribute to your own personal development, but contribute to the whole of society. So I ask you to contribute in the widest sense to the making of a better society, both in your own work situation and in your contributions to the wider community in many ways. Finally, let me encourage you to join the Alumni Association. And today, the president of the Alumni Association, Val Wood, was carrying the staff of the university. Uh, and also by graduating, you've become members of convocation. And Robert Jones, a member of convocation, was today carrying the mace of the university. So that if you become a member of convocation or a member of the alumni, you can do that if you want to. I hope you will come back to the university from time to time and that you will assist the university in any way you can, because universities increasingly need the assistance of their graduates. graduates. And I think you know that the university and the faculty will always be pleased to welcome you back. I have now asked the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Tony Blake, to introduce the occasional speaker. Alma mater, 
it's a particular pleasure, Chancellor, for me to introduce Rowena Sylvester, Corporate Treasurer of Athlex Limited. Rowena Sylvester graduated from the New South Wales Institute of Technology, one of the antecedents of UTS, in 1982 when she was admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Business. Following her graduation, she spent eight years in banking, working in both the corporate and treasury areas of banking. In 1992, she took up her current position as treasurer of Amplex Limited. In addition to her responsibilities in that regard, she's a member of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, a member of the Australian Society, corporate treasurers and is in fact on the New South Wales executive of that body. She's a justice of the peace and she's director of a charitable organisation, Habitat for Humanity. Chancellor, I now invite Rowena Sylvester to present the occasional address. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, the Dean, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to speak today at your graduation. As you um, have heard, I'm, I'm an ex-student of um, what was uh, the prelude to the University of Technology, and uh, I unfortunately was unable to make my own graduation, so um, I'm actually pleased to be here today to actually be part of your celebrations in Sydney. <coughs> Yesterday I gave a 45-minute uh, presentation on managing and measuring interest rate risk exposure. And if you think listening to 45 minutes on that topic is uh, a long time, you should try making that interesting for 45 minutes. <laughs> Today, you would be pleased to know that I'm going to take 10 minutes. Um, when I attended uh, the UTS, which was one or two years ago now, um, the percentage of females in the Bachelor of Business Studies course was only about 30%. Mm. These days I understand it's more like 52% and I'm pleased to see that there are more and more women um, being educated in what were traditionally male dominated areas. Some of you may be wondering how an ex-student gets to be here. <laughs> um, last year I uh, received a phone call from a gentleman who said, you probably won't remember me, uh, my name is Frank Portello. And for any of you who uh, have done the um, accounting sector of the Bachelor of Business Studies, you probably remember Frank, which I did fairly well. I had one of those moments of mild panic. Um, the name was familiar, I couldn't remember the, the face, and I couldn't think whether I'd met them recently with, other, with one of the banks or through friends. And then suddenly I had a, a flashback, first lecture at the university in the old Anthony Borden's building, which was affectionately known as the, uh, the Rabbit Warren, um, and soon to be World Square. In fact, I, I work next door to it, so I'm, I'm actually busily watching the Anthony Borden's rebuild on the site. Uh, accounting lecturer Frank Portelli and his memorable opening lines. The university is hard work and the dropout rate is very high. You should look to your left and look to your right, because many of you won't be here next week. <laughs> With that warm and friendly welcome, we all looked at each other in panic, hoping it wasn't us. Frank was flattered that I remember him. Um, it's more like how can I possibly forget him. The reason Frank called was to let me know that he copied um, an article that had been in the, in the papers about me um, as a business profile. And he showed it to some of his ex-students, or his students, before the last end of last year exams as encouragement to them as to how potential students or ex-students of the university had actually gone on. Uh, I found out later on actually that through one of the students who actually rang me to have a chat said that he'd actually introduced the slide saying that this was no rogue scholar, but look what you can achieve. <laughs> Finally, I didn't quite mention that introduction to me. Uh, however, I do agree with him that you don't necessarily have to be the smartest in the class uh, to be very good at your job. 
the moral to this story, of course, is we care not about getting a photo in the paper or your letter, thank you. <laughs> Many of you in the audience will have already commenced your careers, while others are just launching into them. My advice in either circumstance is to take whatever opportunities arise and make the most out of them and never be afraid of the challenge. Many times I've been nervous of taking on new jobs or ventures, and most of the time I find that I surprise myself as much as anybody else, and finally I'm not actually capable of, of rising to larger challenge, challenges than I envisage. As a, as a short example of, of one of those times when I sort of didn't actually think that I could do the job was um, when I got my first job in Nanking, which was actually Deloitte's name. I just finished university, uh, and up until then, I'd actually been working at home on that cab property in Hunt Valley. It's hard for uh, me and my work colleagues at the moment to imagine me uh, rounding a cattle on horseback and many flooded creek fences and rounding cattle when most of the time they see me sort of in the suit looking a little more serious than uh, probably they imagine. That first interview was with three directors. Um, three directors all in the race. I had an hour with each director. And uh, for a first interview, I would say it's a little overwhelming to have uh, three hours sort of trying to uh, keep three directors happy and, and try and sound interesting as, and so you know what you're doing. At the end of the interview process, I only had one question of the managing director, and that was, if you offered me a job, what would that be? At the time, there were six uh, jobs on offer. And uh, he looked at me and he said, well, if I offer you a job, you'll be managing the corporate and administration department. I looked at him, I was saying a little bit of surprise at the time, and reminded him that I actually had no experience in banking at all. Um, and he said uh, he was aware of that and he'd think about it and, and would ring me tomorrow morning. He rang me the next morning and, and actually offered me the job, much to my surprise, as much as anybody else's, I think. And I decided that if he was game enough to offer it to me, then I had to be game enough to have a go at it. As you can see, uh, it must have worked out for me because I'm still in the pool. <laughs> Having just completed postgraduate studies, I'm sure the last thing on your mind is, is actually more courses, but as the, the Chancellor has already mentioned, um, it's a very important part of career progression to continue with education. Um, and not only university education, but also short courses. Um, most of you will find that the companies that you work for are very keen to support their employees in further education uh, and I urge you to take, um, make the most of those opportunities um, through short courses and, and university. A career in finance can be varied and challenging. Um, there are very many disciplines in this sector and having worked in it for 18 years, um, one of the, what I thought was a, an obvious move for me was moving to the corporate sector, um, remaining in the, in the Treasury and corporate finance section within a corporate treasury. Um, one of the, the, my concerns at that time was that I wouldn't have become too much of a specialist in my area of banking, um, and I guess that's a choice each student has to make as they go through their career. One of the other benefits of also uh, moving from banking to, to the corporate sector is that you end up coming across the odd former boss who is now trying to market to you selling your products. Um, one such occasion was, uh, in fact, before my arrival at Anthelix, when one of my former bosses discovered that um, I had been appointed to the position and uh, was about to start within the next two or three weeks. And he rang up my uh, current boss and uh, suggested that they actually try and meet before I started, uh, so that you could try and talk to them about increasing the pricing on our uh, domestic facilities. Luckily, my boss actually suggested that they wait until the treasurer arrived. And uh, I must say, I had a lot of fun having the first meeting with him as he tried to negotiate the pricing up and ask lots of various questions about uh, oil and gas companies, thinking that I wouldn't have had time to uh, learn all the jargon. But it's amazing what you can pick up in three weeks. The result of that meeting was uh, a deferment on the issue of, of pricing, and in fact, four months later, the reduction of pricing. So um, I think um, I told him that he should feel good about it because I've learned many of my marketing skills from him. I'm not sure that he sees it quite that way. 
I think uh, just on, as, a, as a final note, one of the good things in the role that I've done moving to the corporate side of things is that understanding what the banks and uh, their credit committees require um, helps me in my role in explaining to the, to the, uh, the banks what our company is about and how we can actually work together um, building up a better relationship. Again, thank you for inviting me today. Um, it's been a pleasure to be part of the whole process. And uh, I see a, a lot of um, happy and probably sometimes relieved faces out there having completed your degrees and, and diplomas. Thank you again, and I wish you all well in your future career. That concludes the formal proceedings of the sworn ceremony. Graduates and their guests are cordially invited to join the Chancellor and the Deputy Vice-Chancellor for refreshments in the Gallery Function Centre on Level 6, which is directly above us. You may reach that by following that in the procession across the pool and up the escalators on the flight. Our new graduates are invited to join the end of the acting procession as it retires. Please rise for the procession.